Hey everybody, it's Patty, and I'm back with another installment of the Snug Bug Sewing Planner. <laughs> I don't know what else to call this. Um, where I like to share pictures, videos, and plans for future projects and um, projects I just finished and all that kind of thing. Mostly this is sewing related. If you enjoy this kind of thing, go ahead and click like, click subscribe, let me know in the comments, do all those things, super fun. Okay, so this week we have a new dress that I have finished and a thrift upcycle and then a third piece of the puzzle, which I actually did not finish. So let's pick a color so we can actually see it this week. I'll pick purple. Um, okay, so a couple weeks ago, and I'll link to this in the comments below, or if I can figure out how to do a link in the video, I'll do that. But a couple weeks ago, I shared my plan for this um, upcycled skirt, this Ogden cami hack, and this ruffled metamorphic dress um these two in particular were really influ inspired by um krista larson who is one of my favorite designers she's not a pattern designer she designs retail um but you should go check her out if you like my clothes um lots of great ideas so i don't remember no i don't have any pictures of the actual inspiration documents or garments anymore but this is what I was planning and I got to work on this and let's see what the results are actually I think I have a video I can show you let's see yeah here we go so I'll press play so here I am in the um, original thrifted skirt which I did some hike ups up on the ham just by running a uh, gathering stitch and here is the Ogden cami hack dress which I am completely in love with that is made from a sheet for a dollar so really love that and then here I'm showing how the metamorphic dress this is one I already have um, looks great with the other two pieces as uh, layering pieces I still really want to do the um, planned garment which I have here and this is a metamorphic dress, the, the waistline's kind of here, with some added ruffles. I think that'll be really cute. I have a turquoise sheet that will look perfect with these. I just haven't finished it yet, and in all honesty, yesterday I stopped by a local fabric shop and got um, three yards of light, light, almost oyster gray uh, silk charmeuse that I'm dying to make into something so I'm a little distracted right now I'll probably move on to that plus I'm going on vacation well it's a working vacation but I'll be gone next week so I won't be able to sew so let's let's take a look at what we did so here this is the thrifted skirt that I got for a couple dollars at a local thrift shop it's polyester which I don't love but I do like these types of skirts that are cut on the bias and um, so they have a little bit of shape to them. And I really like the colors. There's a, a liner you can see under there and it hikes up a bit, which I don't mind at all. It kind of adds another layer. Um, but I thought it was a little bit boring. I wanted some more interest. So I just ran some gathering stitches, you know, like I set the machine on five millimeter, millimeters, maybe. Ran some lines of stitching, um, pulled the thread to to bring those up a little bit and then went back over it with a zigzag stitch. Uh, super easy. I, the only, I mean, it's not complicated, but the only thing that I did that took any amount of work was um, I took the th ends of the threads and used a needle to bring those to the back so I could, I didn't, I didn't go back and forth to end the stitches because, um, because I don't know if I'd like the way it looks. So I just, that's the way I did it. Uh, so, so I was happy with this. I'll totally wear this on its own. And this skirt has a lot of colors in it that'll coordinate with a lot of colors I already have. So this will just make a great layering skirt. So then next up, I made the Ogden Cami hack dress. So um, this is a pretty simple hack. Uh, some special things that I do. The top is just the lining pieces. And if you've seen any of my other um, Ogden Cami hacks, they I went down a size. I reprinted the pattern and I printed out the size 20 pieces. I made zero adjustments. Everything is good. The 
size bigger was just a little bit too big. Um, so this is good, especially when I'm just using the lining pieces. Um, the, at the bottom, I would probably have to flare out quite a bit if I wanted to wear the Ogden cami as designed, but for just the lining pieces, I have a pretty small, um, shoulders and a large bust, but then a smaller in proportion under bust. So if I'm just sizing on that, I can go a lot smaller. It's when I get down to my hips that it's goes into the bigger sizes a lot. So um, I really wanted to get this nice, loose, flowy skirt. I was inspired by a slip from Crystal Larson called the Sweet Slip. You can go and look it up, Sweet Slip Crystal Larson. You'll see what I'm talking about. And um, I'm not 100% sure how hers was constructed. I just kind of took it as inspiration. And I decided that for the look I wanted, um, that a circle skirt that was cut with square edges, so a full square skirt, I guess. I have diagrams that I'll show you. I thought that would get me where I wanted to go. And it did. I think it's great. And then the only other cool thing that I did with this is with a little bit of the trim I had left over, I put a long ruffle from just under the pocket on this side, wrapping around midway to the hem over here. Um, this was interesting. This fabric, like I said, it's a sheet, and it was really thin and kind of hard to work with. Um, this was just a test garment, although I like it so much, I'll probably keep it in my closet for a while, though I think this sheet was probably 100% poly, which is not a fiber I like to wear, but I really like this dress, so I'll probably keep it for a bit. Uh, but that made it really hard to hem, and I decided to teach myself how to hem using my Bernina zigzag narrow hem foot, which if you've ever, if you've seen it, it rolls the hem and stitches it all at once. And I'm sure it works great on a more stable fabric, but it it was a labor of love with this. I didn't have a lot of fabric for the ruffle, so I probably would have made a completely folded over ruffle so it was two layers, so I didn't have to deal with hemming if I'd had more fabric, but um, I didn't. I also would have put um, a ruffle on the back here to mimic the look but I didn't have enough fabric to add more, so I just got what I got. So, and then I have one more picture just showing, this is the regular metamorphic dress over the other two layers. I think it looks great. Um, so this, you know, Ogden dress is a good layering piece over the longer skirt. This looks great. And then when I make my planned garment, which is this kind of ruffle tank, I thought that the metamorphic dress would work really well. I'll make a few changes. For one, I just need to do this, but I'm going to drop the bust line just about an inch. And then when I make the next one, although this does look good and I am tempted to leave it this length, I probably will shorten it a bit and maybe even change the arc a little bit so it, it won't go quite as far down on the sides, but maybe we'll cut up come up a little bit more in the middle and then I'll add the couple layers of ruffles just something that's a little bit shorter um to wear with everything although looking at this the proportions really are nice with the metamorphic dress as I've been making it which is I always add four inches to the skirt for most uh so liberated patterns because I'm 510. So now let's talk about planning out this skirt. Um, I decided to do a full square skirt, uh, which is like a full circle skirt, um, in part because I just know this is how a lot of uh, pixie or handkerchief skim hem skirts are made, but also I really wanted the flow around the midsection. I've been making a lot of the hinterland dresses, which this is a hinterland dress here, and that dress is made from two rectangles that are gathered along the top and the so these are the side seams. So they get their width from just having the width of the fabric, but then they're gathered up here. A circle skirt, um, on the other hand, is actually a circle. So it's very smooth uh, uh, right around the waist, although mine is gathered because of waist ties. So when I started planning this, I had to decide how I was going to attach and how I was going to deal with the width at the waist. Um, I thought of making a skirt that was closer to my 
actual waist measurements and trying to um, shape the Ogden cami bodice a little bit more, maybe with some uh, vertical darts to bring in the waist. But I didn't want to deal with sizing and I wanted it to be nice and comfy. So rather than trying to make a more classic fit and flare dress, which, you know, fits rather closely to the bust through the waist and then flares out at the hips, I decided to make a more free size dress and then add waist ties. So I um, decided to, and I, and I didn't want to mess with the bodice pattern that much if I didn't have to. So what I did is I went and I measured what the bottom bodice hem width was. So, um, you know, uh, Ogden Cami, the back piece, looks like this and then the front piece looks almost the same it's a little bit different because it has the dart but this is this is the center back this is the center front you cut on the fold so I just measured right here on the front times two right here on the back times two and that total width was 58 inches so that incidentally too, that I was kind of laughing because I was worried that I went down a size and that I was going to go too small, but you see where this hits me, right? It's like kind of around my waist, a little bit higher than my waist. Well, my waist is 44 inches. So there's quite a bit of ease there. So I didn't need to worry about that. So I had 58 inches and I wanted the top of my skirt to be the same width as the bottom of my bodice so that they would go together smoothly and then any gathering that would happen would happen when I cinched the waist I wouldn't be uh, doing as part of the construction pro process so that means I needed a circle skirt or a square skirt that had a waist circumference waist is it circumference a waist measurement of 58 inches there um, that's the waist and you know around here's the hem if you've never seen a circle skirt pattern piece before I mean this is what they look like right here and this is the waist and then this is the hem but my pattern piece started out looking like a square and I knew that I wanted this purple part here to be 58 inches so that I would be able to easily attach it to the bodice so, um, how to make a circle that's 58 inches. A lot of you probably already know this, um, but there you, you figure out the math using, um, actually math, using more advanced math. You need to know pi to uh, work with the radius, blah, blah, blah. When I first started sewing 100 million years ago, I was a little bit obsessed with circle skirts because they're really common with the styles that I like then, the more vintage style. And I didn't really like doing math. Also, I needed to figure out how to change the size of a pattern piece um, because I remember I would, I would buy um, commercial pattern pieces for circle skirts. And back then they never had anything my size. And I would need to make it bigger. And when you make a circle skirt bigger, you actually do that by cutting the hole bigger. But it's not, it's not like, oh, I wanted an inch bigger and you make the hole one inch bigger because if you make the hole, if you move it down one inch this way, it makes the waist much bigger. So I needed to figure that out. I didn't like doing it. And so I made a circle skirt calculator. Um, you can actually go to my website pattybrower.com and just click on the magnifying glass here type in circle skirt and you will find this um article called uh circle skirt calculator for the drafting of full half and three quarter skirts with bonus grading worksheet with this picture um, and you can read everything I talked about. I put this together so long ago and have moved my website so many times. Some of the images are now gone. I, I've been thinking I need to update this article because it still gets a lot of traffic, actually. Um, but this kind of shows the different types of circle skirts. There's full, there's three quarters, there's half. And then it shows how much volume. The red one is a full, that's a yellow is three quarter, and the green one is half. And then it shows why you can't just regrade it like we just talked about. But if you scroll on to here, the circle skirt worksheet, and click on that link, it will bring you to this circle skirt worksheet. Now, 
uh, I've gotten questions and just text me if you have a problem. I don't know if I can do this. I'm just using Drive on my iPad. It doesn't have all the functions. If you do this on your desktop, you will have to make a copy of this in order to put in your own numbers. This, the one when, when you go to my blog is a read only copy so everybody can use it. It doesn't get messed up. But, um, so I use this to figure out how to cut my fabric. Now I am going to, um, switch to a editable. This is an editable version. So, um, I knew that I wanted to make a full circle. So I'm not going to get too much into the details of full versus half versus three quarter, but a full circle skirt means you've got this much fabric, this big round circle that wraps around you versus a three quarter circle, which you use less fabric, um, which creates a less volume, voluminous skirt. I can't say that word. So you see this yellow is three quarter versus the red has a lot more fabric in it. I knew I needed a full circle because I was aiming to get this full square so I'd have these nice points to make the cool asymmetrical uneven hem. So I would use the math on here for the full. If you wanted to do three quarter or half, then you can use the other columns. So all you do is when I do spreadsheets, the white is where you put information in and the gray is the calculated fields. So I put in 58 inches and then when I set up this calculator, so when you cut that circle for the waist, it's super stretchy because it's on the bias. And because of that, if you have a 30 inch waist and you cut a 30 inch circle, all of that stretch is actually gonna make the waist that you cut bigger than your actual waist. So I recommend um, two inches, subtracting at least two inches to kind of account for that squish, that stretchiness of the fabric. For what I'm doing for this, I added four inches. Um, I don't know why I did that, just because I was cutting a big circle so there'd be a lot of bias available. So that gives us um, our waist radius of 8.6 inches. And then you need to decide on length. So a regular circle skirt, I recommend right in the um, spreadsheet to use 20 inches. I'm kind of tall and I'm gonna show you a couple things that I was thinking when we switch back to the diagram, but based on thinking through it, I went with 25 inches, not 20, so a little bit longer. And then I entered a half an inch for a seam allowance. I actually don't, didn't, I don't really care that I, I wasn't too precise with this. I just, because I was going to have an asymmetrical hem, the actual dimensions didn't matter that much. So I put in a half an inch for a seam allowance and one inch for a hem allowance. Um, that gave me a hem cutting line of 35.10. So when I do, I just remembered eight and a half for the weight, waist radius and 35.10 for the hem cutting line. Now, just because I'm doing this, I will very quickly just show you. This is a three quarter circle skirt, um, but the math still works the same if you're doing a circle skirt. So the waist radius is this number here. And that is when you fold, you, well, you can see that is the length from the center center of the skirt 7.6 inches, ours was 8.5. I actually think it was 8.6, but I used 8.5. So from here to the cutting line was 8.5 inches. And then the hem cutting line for us, for my, for my calculations, to get a skirt that was 25 inches long, I need to cut 35 inches out. And I actually think that I have them, this diagram a little bit funky. Okay, I see what I did. So that is from here to here. So, and ours was, I forgot. Ours was 28 inches. But I actually went to 35. I just I decided that on the fly. That's why I was getting confused. Okay, so 
I'm just showing you that calculator gives you two uh, cutting measurements. First is how big this whole, how long that cut is, and the second is that. Um, which you need to know this to know how big your fabric needs to be before you fold it. So I feel like I'm not describing that very well, but we will just continue on here. So I got my measurements, um, which was waist 85, hem 25, so hem cutting line 35 inches. Now, I also had to do a little bit of extra figuring just to make sure I had enough fabric. This is a diagram of my sheet. And this was a diagram of where I cut the skirt. And then I was making sure there was enough left over to cut the rest of the dress pieces out of. And I use graph paper or paper with dots on it so I can actually, you, you can see here, I was counting out the dots by 10 inch increments or five inches, I don't know what I was doing there. So to cut this, you take a, a square of fabric, right? And you fold it in half the long way and you fold it in half that way. And then you end up with a square like this. And to return to this picture, I, what I did is I took, I actually took a piece of knotted string and I put the knots eight and a half inches apart from each other. And then I had Jeff hold the one knot at the corner. And then I kind of held this knot in my hand along with a marker and I made a circle eight and a half inches out. So then I, and then I also, I did this before I started, but from here to here was 35 inches. So I started with a, a square that was 70 by 70. And then when, you know, it was, it was less than 35 inches, but you know what I mean? You can see what I'm saying. So I, um, I did this, I cut the circle out, and then when I unfolded it, I had a pattern piece that looked something like that. So I went ahead and I constructed the skirt. I put the skirt on the bodice. Now originally, and, and I offset it intentionally because when I first put it on, it was, it just had four corners. And I didn't want, it's kind of hard to see here, but it is offset a little bit. Um, so the, the corners weren't on the sides and in the front. I rotated them so they were kind of, um, kind of the corners are kind of over my legs more instead of on the sides and the front. I didn't want one long corner coming down like that. So when I first put it on, it wasn't quite right. I used these measurements and I did a lot of counting because I actually wanted to know what the shortest measurement was gonna be and where that would hit because I didn't want that too high. So that short measurement is right around here, right? And then I have all this other fabric here because that's the corner. Well, when I put, when I did, when I put it on, the, the corners went down way too far um, for my taste. And even my husband kind of raised an eyebrow at it and he usually keeps his mouth shut. Uh, he doesn't render opinions other than that's cute. So it was more like that probably. I mean, it was a look, but not the look I really wanted, especially in the back because of my um, chest being bigger. I don't have any pictures from the side, but the front is higher than the back. So I um, decided to just lop off the corners basically. And the way I did that is I took the square and I folded it in half. And here's a not very written to scale. So the waist would be here, it's folded in half. And I took and I cut off the corners at an angle like that. And then I unfolded it and then refolded it the other way and then did the other corners. And I used, well, I cut off the first corner and then I kept that piece and I used it kind of as a cutting guide for all the other ones. I didn't really care if it was perfect, but I wanted them to be somewhat similar. So then I ended up with a pattern piece that looked kind of like this. Um, so 
this is the front of my body. This is the back. Here are the sides. And um, this is probably not drip. I mean, it was probably more like this. I don't think I cut that much fabric off. But it this kind of gives you an idea of what the shape of the skirt was. I um I cut the first corner and then I I I hung it up to see how I liked it. You know, I I put it on a hanger and looked at it for a while. I might have probably even tried it on. So this wasn't just like cut cut cut. I kind of do this by looking at it, seeing what I like, adjusting and making another cut. But this is pretty much what I ended up with. So I really loved the the dress as it was, but I still needed a few more things. I really wanted to try this ruffle, which was a design element I see a lot, like I said, on the Krista um, Larson site. And you can't see it very well, but there's big patch pockets too. The pockets, I actually don't really love how they look, but I am practical and I always get irritated when my skirts and dresses don't have pockets. So I had the fabric left over that I could make pockets um, of, and I went ahead and I just did a nine inch square uh, patch pocket and I centered it on the side seam. A lot of times I'll center my patch pockets on the skirt side seam, but there is no side seam when you do the style of skirt. So I just kind of laid the dress down on the table. I saw where the side seam was and then I measured, I think five and a half inches down and put my pockets there. So as you can see here, again, here's the front, here's the back, here are my pockets. And then the last thing I did was the ruffle. So I just took this ruffle. It's probably about six inches, five, six inches deep. Um, and I just took all the fabric that I had left. It was two long pieces that I um, spliced together to make a super long piece. Then I ran a line of, um, you know, gathering stitches along the top. I have a ruffle foot, but I want a uh, ruffle feet both form the ruffle and stitch it so it's permanent at the same time. And I didn't know for sure how much length I would be left with and I didn't feel like doing the math. I could figure it out, but I didn't want to do the math. So I decided to just do my own gathering stitches so I could um, adjust manually how long the ruffle would be. I think that it probably was about a two to one um, fullness, meaning it covered on the skirt it went from here to here and let's say that was about 70 inches my ruffle piece was probably between 150 and 170 inches long I'm sorry between 180 to 200 inches long so almost twice the length I didn't measure it I'm just guessing from remembering how it was working with it so I placed it so the ruffle started um, right underneath the pocket so it almost looks like a, it's a ruffle on the pocket. I don't think you can kind of see that right here. Oops. You can kind of see that. Um, this is the pocket and here's the ruffle. So I started on one side with the pocket with the ruffle right underneath it. And then I just kind of wrapped it in this sort of shape and I probably ended, I know I ended it right at one of these corners. So wherever I ended it was like that. And I think, yeah. I think for me, this drawing's a little bit, I think that I ended it right around here. Yep, it was just off front center. So I ended it so that the last six inches or so were completely lined up with the hem of the dress. And this was lined up with the pocket. And then I laid it flat out on my table. And then I just kind of laid it the way I thought, like in a, I eyeballed a nice looking gradual curve. It actually dips a little bit more like that. That's more the shape I went with. And then I pinned it in the middle and then I just used the gathering strands to pull it all together. I pinned it a lot. And then I just did a straight line of stitching. It's not the cleanest uh, sewing I've ever done, but I was kind of testing a concept, so I didn't mind that it was a little bit messy. And as you can see, it looks it looks fine. I mean, if you got really close, there's a couple parts where it's not super nice, but the end result, I really love. Like, I'm going to be using this on more of my clothes. It's just such a clever way to give a multi-layered look without actually having a lot of layers so i you know love i think the key is 
ending the ruffle with a point because then it makes it look like this is one whole piece of fabric and this underneath is another piece of fabric, which is really cool. But in actuality, this is the skirt and this is the ruffle. So I, I just love it. This is something I'm gonna be integrating more. Um, the last thing I did is that I wanted to mention is the ties. So I have talked about in other videos how I use my actual order of construction because I was doing this casing was I sewed the the bodice is lined. I just went ahead and lined it. I don't I I would prefer doing a lined bodice over cutting bias tape and finishing the edges with bias tape. So I just did a lined bodice and then I basted the two layers of the bodice together and then treated them as one. Had I not been doing this casing, I would have sewn the the out the 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 outside um, bodice and skirt together and then I would have folded over the hem of the lining and then uh, probably hand stitched that to the waistline to hide all the messy sewing on the inside but because of this casing I didn't have to do that so instead I did the sandwich method which I've talked about a lot and to do the sandwich method you take your wrong side of your bodice and the wrong side of the skirt, you put them together. Then I cut a strip that was the same length as one as my front bodice and was two and a half inches long. I folded it the long way and then I um, pressed it and then I folded in the ends and pressed that. So I had this kind of finished looking strip. And then you match that up with the two layers you already have like this. All raw edges together here and then you stitch it. I use a half inch stitching allowance. And when you're done and you unfold it, what you have is you have your right side of your skirt like this. I'm gonna just draw it over here. So you end up with the right side of your skirt and you end up with the right side of your bodice. But because you sewed them wrong sides together, the, the seam allowance is sticking out the right side, but you have this tape that was, if you can imagine, it starts out, the tape is folded edge down towards the hem of the skirt, and there's all these raw edges together. You just flip over and you press the, um, the tape so the folded edge is going towards the top, towards your face, and then you edge stitch it. Um, because I was planning to do side ties, I did the front bodice and I did the back bodice separately. And so over on the sides, the two casings meet right on the side seam. I didn't stitch them shut, I left them open and made sure that they matched up very nicely. And they're open and they're, they're finished because I pressed them under. And then I threaded through a tie in the front and a tie in the back. I prefer this kind of tie to the waist tie that's pretty common. I know So Liberated often has a waist tie. A lot of people will talk about how Ivy Abitz, who's another really popular designer, in, not a pattern designer, uh, she does ready to wear, um, but both her and Crystal Larson, they have what looks like are very shaped, um, a little bit more um, fitted styles compared to some of the other designers who are designing like this, like Magnolia Pearl and so Tina Givens, but they're not that fitted. They just have waist ties. My problem with waist ties is they're great if you are relatively flat along the front. They'll pull back the fabric. They look really nice. Um, if we go and look at the Crystal Larson site, for instance, um, like this shirt is shaped a lot with waist ties. You know, if we go to the back, Look at, look at how cinched up that is. So it has this nice waist definition. The problem is if you're bumpy on the front like I am, I have, you know, big boobs. I also have a pretty rounded tummy. It it doesn't look this nice. It's, it strains the bust. It strains the fabric. It's just not a look that I really love. And even on 
this Crystal Larson. I don't love how, um, I lowers the picture of the back. I don't love how bunchy it gets in the back. I just, it's not a fitting tool that I really love. So, um, hey, we need Pam. I hit the wrong thing. So, <laughs> okay, that's my trip total. Okay, so I instead prefer these side ties because then it allows me to very evenly, um, gather everything and arrange where the fullness is. Yeah, I like to put it more on the sides and less in the front. And the reason I, d I do side versus the ties coming out in the front or coming out in the back is just because for me it's easier and you don't need as much fabric. When I've done the ties coming out through the front or back, it's very similar with making a casing like that that you put at the waist, but then you use buttonholes, like you, you use your buttonhole function to cut a buttonhole here and here and that's what you thread your ties through and it's just more work to put in a buttonhole in my opinion than doing it the way I do it plus I don't really love the look of the ties hanging down like this I, I think it's a little bit more elegant on the side and kind of fun so that's the last thing I wanted to mention and how I did this hack I think this is really cute it kind of gives you that sort of more fitted look uh, fit and flare looking dress without um, having to do all the um, seam work and and you don't need to have buttons or zippers which you need in a more fitted style usually to get it on it's just a really easy um, really easy way to to make a cute dress like this the other thing is um, you can you know I have a another slip dress that I made kind of similar using the Ogden bo bodice. The skirt is a lantern skirt, and then, but it has the waist tie. And by using the waist tie, you can wear it on its own and have this nice like sort of more fitted look. But when I wear it as a slip underneath other things, then I leave the ties undone basically. And it's much more comfortable around your waist it doesn't bind up it doesn't if it's a hot out you're not you know having more fabric touching your body which I hate so I love the versatility of that and I think with that I have covered everything I wanted to talk about yes I have I mean I just want to say one more time I mean how beautiful is this layered look I just love it so I hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know. Send me a note. You can come and follow me on Instagram. That's where I share a lot of my stuff. Um, I'm Patty Brower, and this is what my Instagram looks like. Or you can follow me on Facebook. On Facebook, it's um, Patty the Snug Bug, which it's not going to go. Oh, that's my personal. You can come and follow my personal profile, too. But um, I, don't, I love making new friends on Facebook, but I've really moved a lot of my sewing stuff over to my page, which is uh, Patty the Snug Bug. Oh, now it's not there. Anyway, it's there. I promise. Thanks for coming along on this sewing journey, and I will see you next week.